Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Intermission. We're nearly there. We're nearly through this shithole of a year. Praise <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 2016 has been a very, very interesting year, both in real life and in the internet communities where pale nerds who pretend to be unaffected by real life hang out. And Hang in there, guys! Sucked. Just a couple more weeks! <laughs> Keep your arms inside the car! We can get through this! <laughs> There's probably going to be a couple more interesting escapades to go by, but uh, let's just Please jump... don't leave the house, Tim Curry! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, with us again is my usual co-host, Kenzie. Hello! Uh, returning guest, Combine Keegan. Hello! And the current developer behind uh, Doom RL Arsenal, and the previous Gameplay Award winner of the CAC Awards, Yo. Help! <laughs> Everyone else ran away and hid, and now he's kidnapped me to do his podcast. <laughs> yeah. For a second thought, I thought we were having to give him a, a jolt. Our usual fourths have abandoned us, and uh, I kind of had to run the gamut before accepting Mr. Birdbrain here, but uh, he's, he's really excited to be on board with us. He, he's very interested and wants to help out as much as he can. Isn't that right, y'all? His terror intensifies. <laughs> Alright, with that out of the way, uh, let's just jump right in. It's, like I said, been a very eventful couple of weeks, and uh, the CAC Awards happened. Oh boy. Yay. Happy birthday, Doom. Yeah, happy birthday, Doom. Doom is 23 years old now. Bloody hell. Can't even get a daughter entry job. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of games with an active community that are still going on like that. Just Most games would be hits if they were still being played like four years down the line, but 23? Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah. One of those magical things that I'm not sure will ever be repeated by anything. I mean, I'd be very happy to be proven wrong, but... I can't really think of many other, like, really old games that are still being played and developed and modded like that, aside from maybe Neverwinter Nights. You're on a real Neverwinter Nights kick lately. <laughs> 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 I love Neverwinter Nights. I really like Neverwinter Seriously, every second sentence you've been saying for the last week has been about gnolls. I uh, yeah, just... Some, sometimes I, I want to roll dice and hide behind a screen and pretend that my level 13 elf has a chance of scoring with the bird maiden. Yeah. Rude. Elves suck. Rude! Here, yeah, yeah. Rude! Bunch, bunch of tree-hugging cannibals. You just don't understand my elvish grace and charm. Oh, I understand it. I also understand how tree branches keep snapping under your elven grace and charm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, straight on the CAC Awards. I mean, there were a lot of really good mods released for this for Doom this year, and yeah, it, like holy shit, it was really, really difficult to settle the list down to just ten. And in fact, we didn't. We actually had a special eleventh CAC Award because, I mean, it's it's Romero. We're we're breaking the rules for Romero. Romero's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. hey Romero. After all this time, you still got it, man. Oh yeah, you earned that CACO. Mm-hmm. There have been worse comebacks. <laughs> God knows, Romero's done some of them. I'm pretty sure at this point, like, every time Romero even just hears the word Daikatana, his power level grows. His hair extends another inch or so. There was some really, really fierce competition behind the scenes, too. I mean, there were some things that we really could not decide upon. I mean, there were some things that were going to be uh, absolutely mandatory to appear, like Ancient Aliens. I mean, nobody was surprised by Ancient Aliens. I mean, someone... Skillsaw released another map set. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's another Kako. That's that's another Kako. At this point, we just have them ready to, to go. <laughs> Look, Combined Arms didn't even get a mention. This Kako Wars was a complete fucking bust. Well, I mean, you've seen that guy posting on 4chan. Maybe if uh, the Combined Arms wasn't such a complete terror to the Juve Bowl of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I've got something to address that later, but we'll get to that later. There were some entries in the Kakos that were kind of heated, though. I mean, uh, it, for those who were listening to the previous iterations of the podcast, it, it's not exactly a secret... We did not like Blade of Agony. <laughs> we really did not like Blade of Agony. It was... Mm. 
even behind the scenes in the CAC Awards discussion, I mean, the the entire reaction for everyone was mixed. We had reactions the entire spectrum. We had people that thought it was okay, people that thought it was mediocre, people that thought it was bad, and then people that just absolutely hated it. Only one single person really liked it. And that one single person held all the power, so... Yeah, that one single person, he was Scuba Steve, and, you know, the Keck Awards are kind of his baby, so he can pull seniority. And to be fair, as much as I dislike how Blade of Agony plays, technologically, it is very impressive. Oh, yeah. The amount of work that's gone into the art assets, the amount of detail in the levels, the amount of, like, scripting tricks that are used. Like, on a sheer, like, level of effort put in, it is stunning. It just happens to play like a dog. (laughs) Yeah, there's no denying. Blade of Agony is a spectacle. It is definitely a spectacle. It looks gorgeous, and it is an an attention grabber. Scuba Steve was right when he said it's the sort of thing you'd show your friends when they're asking people are still modding Doom. You just wouldn't let them play it. Yeah. Hmm. That's fair. The Mock Award as well. That was uh, that was some pretty hot competition as well. There was a lot of stuff released in uh, 2016. A lot of hot takes on uh, very interesting things in the Doom community. And outside of it. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine the discussion over what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of Mock Awards did you guys like? Because Lord knows there was no shortage of them. Now I'm just imagining, like, this, like, dimly lit conference room with a bunch of people gathered around a table, cigarette smoke filling the air, and people going like, Okay, guys, it's rapidly approaching three in the morning. What do we choose? H-Doom or (laughs) Trump-Doom? There was actually a discussion as to... uh, H-Doom actually had the most nominations out of everything, and we actually had a pretty heated debate as to whether we should give the Mock Award to h Doom and for this year only call it the Cock Award. <laughs> Was there a lot of people involved in that debate? Um, Could it be called a mass- oh, I'm gonna stop myself right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was just a circle of jerks, that was all. <laughs> what do you think you're tugging at there? Oh, uh, nothing, I'm just kind of reaching around, explaining things. <laughs> are, are you alright, Yol? Do you need a handy? The pun train has no break, save me from this hell. <laughs> y'all agreed to come along. Welcome to podcasts, y'all. <laughs> but unfortunately, H Doom did not win because, as much as we, as much as funny as it would be, and uh, as interesting as the reactions would be, ultimately it boiled down to two things. One, it's a porn mod. You can't really show porn on a mainstream website, especially with terms of service against explicit content. Two, nowhere near finished. It's still in tech demo state. Ah, bless. That being said, H Doom does deserve some credit because uh, there's a lot of um, detail in those animations. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to have to get him on this thing at some point. If uh, if his schedule goes at the rate of his uh, updates, though, then that might not be for another two years. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, hey, have you ever wanted to see Doom Guy fuck a pinky in the ass? No, neither did I. <laughs> Here it is anyway. But I woke up this morning and it was on my hard drive, so, uh... Balls deep. <laughs> Guns are for wusses. Unzips dick. <laughs> and now that we've completely destroyed our chances at a career in politics... <laughs> okay, moving on to a uh, much cleaner subject. Well, cleaner in the, uh, pants sense. Ah, this one's a bit of a interesting thing. Yo, you might, uh... You've probably been following this quite closely. Doom RL, a long-standing roguelike inspired by Doom, and the inspiration for Doom Roguelike Arsenal, has been hit with the notice from uh, Zenimax. Yeah. I never, I never heard of this. Looks like game. it was just, what, a domain thing? Where it had Doom in the name? And Zenimax it was basically just... like It was basically <laughs> like the search meta tags on the page. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like the scrolls issue from years ago. Yeah, sort of the same thing, just this boring trademark stuff that legally they have the right to, but... And it wasn't as big an issue as people thought it was, 
yeah. where like the initial buzz was like, oh, they're taking down Doom RL, blah blah blah. We're gonna have to move the Doom World servers to Sea Land. Yeah. And it's to like, be fair, all the stuff that's happened recently. There's no wonder we'd why we jumped to that. Yeah. yeah, with Nintendo and that. Yeah. But like, it was a lot less of an issue than it really was. The name just got changed to DRL. And I'm going to be honest here, the new logo is a lot better. Mm, it is pretty. Anytime a corporate sends out a letter, you got to pay attention. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, it was resolved without a whole lot of issue, but boy, was there an initial panic at first. <laughs> yes, and just to top it all off, uh, Cornell's uh, other game, his new game that's being kickstarted, Jupiter Hell, which oh. probably started this whole thing, hit its crowdfunding target. Oh yeah, I honestly, yes. I honestly am pretty sure that is in no small part to the sheer amount of publicity that this got. I mean, <laughs> yes. I think there's others. I like the thing that it can't really be nailed down to one thing, because I also saw uh, Jake Solomon, the creative director on the XCOM series, promoting it on his Twitter. I, I have to wonder if that was a slightly ulterior motive to what Zenimax did. They hit. The dude with the most light legal attention they could give it, and it spirals out of control, and people pay attention to his Kickstarter, and in just a week it gets completely funded. I don't think I'd attribute that much uh, Machiavellian uh, planning towards a corporate legal department. <laughs> I think it was just some generic kid gloves, uh, legal scale letter that. Uh, happened to hit the right place at the right time. It's certainly interesting to play conspiracy theory, though. Oh, yeah. Especially considering there was a certain other project that has been actively promoted by id. It's fair and perfectly fine. Speaking of which, <laughs> Brutal Doom 64 received an update recently, and some of the design changes in it, um... <sighs> Both questions. guys like chain gunners. <laughs> <laughs> chain gunner guys have a 50-50% chance of replacing normal zombies. And that would be a funny thing to add as like an optional like plutonium mode toggle as an Easter egg, but as an actual gameplay mechanic, it is just unlogic. I'm sure I I speak for a lot of people when I say, "Mark, what the fuck?" <laughs> I think uh what the I think my favorite addition is the uh, the tactical mode, which adds a uh, stamina feature. Well, and reloading, sprinting, reloading. It's it's like. To be fair, the the stamina is also present in the standard mode. It just the stamina is just for kicking. Yeah. Hmm. It yeah. just feels like. There's a lot of work going into this brutal Doom 64, but a lot of it feels ill-conceived. <laughs> The problems with the initial Brutal Doom 64 release were more on the code side and less on the feature side. The fact that it didn't include a lot of bloat from Brutal Doom, that was a really good thing. The issues were more with the fact of sprite-based lighting that were monsters. Monsters? <laughs> Seriously, what the hell? <laughs> A little bit of explanation. Um, a lot of the lighting and effects in Brutal Doom 64 come from decorative actors that are all over the map, such as, you know, light sprites. The problem is, these don't look good because they are ultimately just static pictures that aren't actually lights. They're also flagged in the code to technically be monsters, so when you pick up a light amplification visor, they invert. Oh god! Oh god! <laughs> the entire sprite inverts, not just the actual bright part itself. So uh, you're going to see a whole lot of gigantic boxes all over the map. I had no idea. <laughs> Why? There's also the issue of the uh, the new monsters, the Revenants. It's uh, it's a recolor of. Chernobog. Actually, not even a recolor. It's just a uh, Chernobog without the horns. And, uh, shrunk down. Yeah, it's like... I guess it comes back to the whole, uh, Blade of Agony thing, where it's a lot of work gone into something that, uh, isn't fantastic. 
But in this case, Blade of Agony has a lot of technical and artistic uh, attributes that sort of like elevate it above just being just a bunch of effort. And uh, Riddle Doom 64 basically just feels like it's gone down the wrong path. Yep. And speaking of games that went down a wrong path, uh, rec- I, we mentioned last episode that a uh, making of documentary about uh, Doom 2016 was being made. Oh yeah, how'd that turn out? Well, the first episode came out probably like 12 hours ago, and it is actually pretty damn good. The first episode goes into like a... It actually delves into the making of the original Doom 4 that got cancelled, and has some of the first gameplay footage and talks about some of the stuff that they salvaged from it. And it's very fascinating to see people just outright admit that they were going down the wrong path. Like, it was more of a cover shootery sort of thing. The monsters are redesigned in ways that they weren't really recognisable as the Doom monsters. It was a lot more narrative focused. Like, the way to describe it is that Doom is typically about one guy in the middle of something huge. While the Doom 4 that was cancelled was more about the something huge. That's what they say. The first way to uh, repair your mistakes is to recognize them. So props on them. Yeah, definitely. And it was also very interesting to see, like, specifically where things that were in Doom 4 came from... That were in Doom 2016 came from the Doom 4 prototype. Like, the glory kills. They started as a, like, scripted melee fight thing. That was sort of similar, but uh, was a lot longer. Sort of like the melee kill things in Wolfenstein The New Order, I guess. It's just interesting to see this evolutionary process. It's definitely a sort of peek into an alternate universe, dude. Yeah, and it's not like it was complete and utter shit. Like, some of the n- new monster designs they showed. Like, the new monster designs were fascinating. Like... The sheer amount of production values that were going into the scenery and into the FMV was uh, really, really high. It just didn't seem like it would be a good Doom game. If it was loose under like literally any other name and had like the serial numbers filed off, it probably would have done pretty well. Like another Rage. But still, it's interesting that it's all worked out into what it was. Kind of like uh, with Doom Delta. It's very interesting to see what might have been an alternate universe take. Yeah. Just, I always have this fascination in seeing things that were cut out. One question still remains, though, and this is very, very important. Was that actually Danny Trejo? <laughs> um, in other releases recently... Um, <laughs> Arcane Dimensions got its 1.5 update, and we don't really talk about Quake mods that much here because we don't have a whole lot of experience with, like, the Quake engine or the Quake community, mm-hmm. but seriously, play that fucking mod. Oh yeah. It's gorgeous. It looks beautiful. I, the level design is like, if like, it feels like a middle ground between like professional quality indie games and Quake. like. The environments are a lot more detailed with environmental elements, there's more scripting, but it's still at the core of the Quake gameplay. You're still fighting grunts and ogres and that. There's a lot more monsters that sort of blend into the uh, Quake gameplay flow, like filling in the gaps in the monster order. There's more like weapons and power-ups. Some weapons have changed sort of fill in gaps and that it is basically a complete overhaul and a complete map set in one and it is fucking astounding and they made the axe not shit yeah like the axe is by itself a little better and there's also an alternate one you can pick up the blood axe that jibs monsters Hmm. so you can use it on zombies the whole thing about uh, new enemies that fit the whole quake thing that's actually really interesting because what exactly is quake's thing it had changed direction changed styles, changed focus so many times that Quake's thing is that it really doesn't have a thing. It's a complete hodgepodge mishmash of styles from different eras and different design directions. Yeah, and a lot of the new monsters actually sort of help benefit that because you have monsters that fill in gaps in a specific style where the pre-existing monsters are in a different style. 
Like, for example, one of the new monsters is a crossbow man, who's sort of in the style of the knight and the hell knight, but is intended for, like, those medieval-style maps. Interesting. As sort of an equivalent of the shotgun guy. There's some pretty uh, tough stuff that you can fight. Like, one of the... One of the new levels that they include, as sort of an example, is a remake of uh, E1 M1 of Doom. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more architectural detail in that, and you're sort of playing through. There's some a couple of new monsters, like a like a enforcer type guy on a floating platform, mm -hmm. like a hoverboard sort of thing. And you get to the end, and you hit the button, and it's like slipgate activated back at the start of the level. So you start backtracking and things start going south, like new monsters are appearing, walls are being torn down by existing monsters, the start room now has giant fucking minotaur dudes. Mm -hmm. And it's really fascinating, like, where they take this... Where they take what this environment that you're intimately familiar with and sort of turn it on its head by making you go back through it as it's changing in front of you. Is there any more Lovecraft gen stuff? There's the wizard dudes from, like, uh, Hexen 2. And those guys are, the you know, the fucked up skull robes and skull hat and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So you got all the creepy mystical stuff as well. I don't understand how you can say you don't know what Quake's thing is. I think everybody should know what Quake's thing is. It's her! Well, I guess uh, the answer was either huh, or brown. <laughs> or brown, yeah. yeah it's brown. Quake, uh, Quake actually had some pretty colorful environments. It's it's kind of surprising that brown has been attached to it so much, because a lot of Episode 3 in particular actually had a lot of colorful maps. There was a lot of uh, red, there was a lot of blue. The Wizard's Mance in particular, oh, that was beautiful use of blue and purple. Well, the color ranges in Quake were compared fairly limited in comparison to Doom because they had to like uh, dedicate more shades of each color to deal with the softer lighting since it wasn't sector based lighting like in Doom so there was comparatively less color schemes available they sort of addressed the balance with like the GL versions and the Nintendo 64 versions since they could do colored lighting in those but in software you still were still for the most part dealing with brown and blue yeah, yeah, that explains it. One one thing that uh, is just... I, I don't mean to harp on the Lovecraft and stuff, it's just... I miss that stuff in Quake. I mean, I miss the original Quake, and it's just really creepy, gothic, just eldritch textures. Or, not eldritch. It's eldritch locations. And then Quake 2 came around, and it was about orange cyborgs. Sci-fi. And then Quake 3 came around, and it was... Multiplayer. Yeah. And then Quake 4 came around, and... It, it was, was shit. <laughs> now, hold up. I kind of like Quake 4. The blaster pistol's really good. I was watching a speedrun of Quake 4 recently, and the, the bit where you get the grenade launcher in the campaign, it is sitting on a crate, and there are two guys standing in front of you with an invisible wall between you and them. And they have to go through an entire conversation thing before they physically pick up the grenade launcher and hand it to you. That sucks. It's little things like that that, like, just as Doom 3 felt like it was sort of cribbing off Half-Life and System Shock, Quake 4 felt like it was cribbing really hard off of uh, Half-Life 2 and perhaps a little bit of the Call of Duty sort of thing. Now we've got the new Quake coming out and... <laughs> <laughs> we want the Overwatch audience. <laughs> I'm interested in uh, Quake Champions, actually. Don't it fuck feels it up, like guys. There's a lot of places where it could go wrong, but I sort of like some of the things they've been saying. Mm -hmm. And in, like, sort of uh, the way that these powers sort of influence and can change, uh, can sort of play with the balance of a team game. Not, I'm not gonna lie. First impressions, the first impressions, the comparisons are always going to stay the same. Like how everyone was comparing uh, Doom 4 to Halo when it was first revealed. Now people are comparing Quake Champions to uh, Overwatch and Team Fortress 2. Are those comparisons going to be valid? 
Probably not. They're probably just overreacting comparisons, but is it going to be difficult to shake that stigma? Yeah. I'm interested to see where they go with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm worried, but I'm interested. Because at the very least, Quake really, really deserves a lot more love than it's been getting. Yeah, I think they're saying that this is going to be... this That Quake Champions is sort of like reintroducing Quake to the world. So if it's successful, they can sort of see where to go from there with the series. And I'm sort of hoping that, like... Well, everyone reacted to the announcement by sort of hoping that they go back to the single-player Quake 1 style thing. And I can understand that because Quake 1... And because Doom 2016 got the campaign sort of stuff absolutely perfect. And having even more retro FPS sort of bl modern FPS blend in the style of Doom 2016, but in that sort of eldritch gothic sort of world, would absolutely fucking rip. And even Romero said that he really, really wants to go back to the original Quake style aesthetic because that sort of thing was really interesting at the time. It's still interesting to people now, and it's not something that is covered a lot nowadays. That and uh, I think Carmack was interested in heading back there too. But ultimately, I think throughout the course of history, Quake has mostly made its place in history as the multiplayer game. Quake 1 introduced proper internet play, Quake 2 sort of uh, pushed that a little further, and Quake 3, Quake 3 was basically the dawn of esports, for better or worse. Yeah, and Quake World set it up with uh, Quake 1, but Quake 3 is where the impact really started. Yeah, and uh, so I can see why they'd go straight back to multiplayer. Also because this is sort of being headed up by the Quake Live devs. Oh yeah, and the esports, as much as we joke about, we want the esports crowd. That is where the money is nowadays. And it's also where the eyeballs are. You make something that's interesting enough to get like esports recognition sort of stuff, then people are going to be watching that, get interested, and buy into your game. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I don't think that going for the esports stuff straight out of the straight out of the gate is the right way to do things. You need to be focusing on making the game fun first, because if the game is not fun, you will not get an audience. And that's why I sort of look at things like, uh, like Street Fighter V more or less completely flopped with that. Like, it was just violently targeting the whole esports fighting game tournament sort of thing. And it sort of, it got it, but because in, it got it because there wasn't really much else. Like, I've heard stories of, like, Japanese uh, Street Fighter V champions referring to the game as Obligation Five mm -hmm. because that's the big arcade fighter and that's what everyone's playing and so they have no real choice but to play and compete in a game they don't especially enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that will hurt you more in the long run than anything else. Capcom shitting the bed? Oh, start the presses. <laughs> I know, right? It's so... Fucking Dead Rising 4. Oh, this has been kind of the uh, hot opinion half an hour. I was rambling a bit, too. Yeah, sorry for kind of drowning out Keegan and y'all. Um, but yeah, I... I I'll, just, I'll just let it at that. I'll just say fuck Dead Rising 4 and fuck Capcom. Mm -hmm. Also, I would love to see um, Quake go back to the old ways of one angry man, a shitload of artil heavy artillery versus Eldritch Abominations. He's just... Ranger's fucking pissed. <laughs> I don't think he has any... I, a lot of people joke about uh, Kratos being just a ball of rage, but I don't think Ranger has any emotion other than rage. He has another emotion. Smug face. <laughs> An angry <laughs> smug face. This man is powered by rage alone. By sheer but force. yeah, I'm looking forward to the next episode of One Man vs. A Tree Made of Flesh. No matter when it comes. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. Well, let's just uh, jump straight out of the world of speculation and jump into the now. So, uh, the stuff we've been playing recently. Uh, yo, what sort of stuff have uh, you been playing recently? We've been taking the podium for a little bit. Let's jump straight to you and hand you the microphone. Well, nothing Doom-related, really. I've been playing the new expansion for the Star Trek Armada 3 mod for Sins of a Solar Ember. Mm. Which is... Oh, it's so... God, 
What sort of stuff is that all about? Well, it's a spiritual sequel to the Star Trek Armada games. The old RTSs from the golden era of Star Trek games. Built onto an engine that's really good for this sort of shit. The engine that can actually do it. Yeah. An um, engine not it... tainted by interplay stink. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things with the previous expansion release. It was a good, solid game. But with this new one, instead of adding new units or new factions or stuff, they just expanded the universe. So when you play and explore the galaxy, you found all these different things and events and stuff, and it really makes it interesting. It feels more alive. Rather than just being a static, strategic thing. Shoot that bit until it blows up, take it, shoot that bit sort of thing. It's a game of lore. Oh, yes. And that looks to be in the top 10 of Mod DB's Mod of the Year once more. <laughs> really? To give an idea of the quality. What sort of other stuff is on uh, Mod DB? <sighs> it's the Ultimate Apocalypse mod for Dawn of War that I've been playing religiously. I'm not sure where that'll get up there, but it's definitely in the top 100 right now. <laughs> ModDB is a uh, interesting site for different mods, and it is amazing just how shitty they've been about the Doom community. Mmm, yes. <laughs> Please don't remind me. Okay, uh, sorry, y'all. I'm going to be reminding you. A uh, little bit of context for those who aren't as invested in the Doom community as we are. Uh, ModDB is not terribly favorable about Doom mods, partially because of there's all sorts of people that tend to upload mods made by other people without any sort of credit attached to them aside from their own name. This is... Dag is this person through the internet. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of mod thievery that goes on in the Doom community on ModDB. A lot of resource theft, a lot of uh, mod theft, a lot of credit theft, and it is just not a good place for Doom mods because A, there is no feedback being filtered back to the creator, so they have no clue what these people are experiencing, if there's bugs, if there's issues, if there's crashes. B, many of the mods uploaded are actually older versions, and don't have any of the updates that the creators have done since and see when it comes to resources they contact the completely wrong person who has absolutely no clue about anything mm -hmm. yeah it's always great <laughs> great it's real good uh, i made a mod db account solely to stop my shit from being stolen and i've actually contacted the staff about removing stuff from other people and do you want to know what their response was? <laughs> their response was basically, ModDB is the biggest place on the internet for game mods, including Doom. And the game developers should instead be quite grateful that their mod is receiving so much exposure to such a wide audience of people. Fuck off! <laughs> Die! <laughs> they did not use those exact words. <laughs> Uh, that is what their message boiled down to. Rather than actually addressing the concern, they responded by pointing to the very wide audience of ModDB users. Of which, yes, I will admit, ModDB has a massive audience, and the fact that the mods are now reaching a much wider audience of people. They have no interest in actually deleting these mods or banning the people that are stealing the mods. None. Dick. That's right. I'm... The entire reason I made an account there was just to yell at someone who had stolen something from one of my mods. It took about two months, I can't remember, for him to respond. Then I sent him another message going, oh, well, you actually responded. And uh, I still haven't received a response. I sent that on the 20-something 20, 20 of November. Hmm. So, hmm. Uh, yo, how's been your, your contact with the Project Brutality guy? Uh, contact? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever managed to get in contact with uh, the Complex Doom guy? Uh. Yes, I have done so in the past. 
Yeah, that's that's an individual. <laughs> contact is certainly a word one would use, much in the mm. contact of flesh to flesh delivered during a punch. What this thing is from your thing? Oh, it's been in there for ages, though. You should have spotted it before. <laughs> yeah, because detailed you know, credits don't text. That shitty mod. ModDB is not a website we enjoy. That's not to say the entire site is awful, though. I'm sure the staff that don't handle Doom mods are quite wonderful people. Ooh, ooh. That's one cool thing. Um, so I'm going to spoke for a bit because I really like this. Um, <laughs> when the Star Trek Armada 3 mod, uh, this expansion was in its final stages of development, every day they would submit about two to three pictures of ships from the factions chosen randomly and have so they have this really pretty shot of the ship and then they have the entire description and history and everything about the ship and so every day you just go onto their site and read about the new ships and all of their stuff oh this is so good <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do a countdown <laughs> y'all is a uh, lore nerd which honestly i can't blame him because lore is really cool Good stuff. I am only a babby lawler nerd compared to Derma. <laughs> well, moving on straight from there, let's go on to a happier subject from a uh, mod data bitch. <gasps> Kenzie or Keegan, do you want to wrestle over who gets to go next? Kenzie can go first. I'm sure he's got more stuff than me. So, um, recently, Doomwise, I have two things that I've been playing recently. The first is I started scratching the surface of Mutiny, mm. which got a CAC award recently. And I haven't gotten very far into it, but I'm very interested in it because it is uh, sort of going into that whole uh, cyberpunk TC old style that like Strain, which I played through and mostly enjoyed, I think, earlier this year, mm. outside of a couple of levels, like the fucking starship things with the Sean texture. <laughs> so I haven't dipped into that too far, but it seems pretty decent so far, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to delving deeper into it. Yeah, the early 90s uh, cyberpunk megawads, those were really, really interesting. One of the uh, most popular is uh, Icarus by Team TNT, and that had some very interesting concepts. Some of the maps were kind of eh, but Icarus was... Icarus and Daedalus, those were really cool. Those were really cool, and it's good to see it get a spiritual successor. And another thing that came out... That I, we mentioned this in the previous episode, but it's come out since then. I've played it a bit. Uh, Bethesda Pinball. Ooh. The Pinball FX. So I gave that a spin, and there are three tables in it. Uh, Fallout, uh, Skyrim, and Doom. I'm not much a big fan of the Fallout and Skyrim tables because they attempt to implement RPG mechanics what? into otherwise straight-faced pinball. What? What? To the point of holding down the flipper button in the middle of play to access your inventory. What? What? Yeah, like you have a character and you find equipment in that. What? What? And, you, like, your character is standing on the side of the table and occasionally, like, a big cardboard cut out of a monster will appear on the table and he'll mime hitting at it as you hit hit with your ball. What? It's weird, man, and it doesn't work enormously well. What? That props for attempting something different, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Doom is comparatively uh, straight-faced. Like, there are, you have your little Doom 4, Doom guy on the side of the table, there's a HUD near the flippers, and you, like, find weapons as you play that you use during bits where you fight mo monsters. So you'll be hitting, like, targets with, like, cardboard cutout mancubuses or whatever, while your little Doom guy and a little imp are, like, trading blows on the side. But for the most part, it's just fucking pinball. I bet another thing that uh, makes you happy about the pinball release is that uh, now you have models to play around with in uh, Source Filmmaker, huh? Yeah, someone managed to dip into that, and uh, it's, it's been fun. But yeah, the Doom 4 pinball stuff, uh, visually and audio-wise, it's a treat. 
because the table itself and all the models around it are all themed on Doom 4, while the little LED display is all Doom 2 themed graphics, rendered in like four shades of orange. And all the audio is basically uh, from Doom 4, and there's like characters from that talking throughout it. Uh, Samuel Hayden sounds a little weird though, I'm not sure if it's like a sound alike or if they just fucked up the voice filters. But everyone else sounds spot on, so... How does Doom Guy sound? <clears throat> he doesn't actually have any sounds whatsoever in Doom 4, he's just completely silent. Ah, see, good. They got it perfect then. Like, not even the... <clears throat> or whatever, it's just complete nothing. Yeah, not even any death screams, which is kind of surprising. Oh, they're in the files, but I'll get to that. There's uh, also... It's also a bit of a shame that, um... They did not include one of the greatest Doom Guy lines of all time, the taunt from the Skull Tag source port. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we've been turning that into an Easter egg in our mods. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably ask Carnival for permission and see if I should put it in uh, the booty project. <laughs> but how about you, Keegan? What have you been up to? What have you been playing? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, I was playing that. Oh, geez, I just got uh, Hubris Containment Sector. Not sure who made it, but it was some anonymous dude that you know submitted it to the Doom thread. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed the flow of the maps. Uh, the fact that all the secrets don't involve like you having to hump walls. Just you know, either you know you flick a switch and a door opens up elsewhere, or what have you. Um, he makes good use of a lot of Realm Six Six Seven resources. And he offers an alternate weapon set with it. Um, granted, it's just a bunch of old Aryans weapons, and in fact, I don't think it actually any of those Aryans weapons have been modified by him. But it gets the job done well. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, I also tried a little bit more of um, Necro Doom, which is cool as shit. Oh yeah, Though, Necro Doom got an update recently, didn't it? I think I, was I don't think it did. There. I think it was just like a thread bump. Yeah, somebody bumped it. That, I think it was my fault there, but. I would like for it to be updated, and I think Zazer mentioned something about that. It'd be nice if you could repair the suit and heal the guy that's out of the suit. Oh boy. Also, it, it never gets old that when you climb out of the Necro Doom suit, the guy hits like a key fob, so it's like, whoop, whoop! <laughs> Love that shit. And when it explodes, it's the uh, the car BP noise. Yeah. Z Zazer's work has always been good. Outside of Doom, though, you've been playing something else lately, haven't you, Keegan? been playing a little bit of Let It Die and a lot of um, Shadow of Mordor, which is an old release. God, that came out like two years ago? But neither of those are really Doomish, and I mean, at least last time I was here, I was talking about a first-person shooter game, but here it's not even, you know, retro shooter at all. <laughs> no, you just you just curb stomp frogs and punch people in the face. Go, go! Go, go! <laughs> it's a very interesting game. So, what have you been working on lately, Term? You seem to be working on stuff constantly. And last I heard, I think you were putting Metroid into booty? <laughs> I am always working on something. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, idle hands are the devil's plaything, and I always... I always try hands? to busy myself with something or another. Idle hands are Mike's place. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I don't give my hands to Mike. Hands? Yeah, they're quite handy, Keegan. Hands. 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 You don't see them because they're up my sleeves. Anyways, what the hell have you been working on, Term? Um, pretty much the same as before. I've been working on the booty project, but uh, it's nearing one year of development now. And uh, there's been some projects that have not lasted that long in the community, so I consider that kind of fortunate. And I think for the one year anniversary of development, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a proper name. Because. As... Booty number nine! <laughs> Space Steel Squad. As fun as the Booty Project is as the name, it is not going to provide some very confident marketing. Ah, no, man. Like, Exceed and Atlas get away with some pretty shame shameless stuff. I'm... And if there's anything that you have, it's no shame, so. <laughs> well, that's not entirely true. I have plenty of shame. You just don't see any of it. Yeah, because you don't show any. The fun thing, uh, I, I guess it could be worse. There was a South Korean children's drama show, a tokusatsu, 
and it has probably one of the most unfortunate names I have seen for a series in my life. Orexian. <laughs> oh. A hero will rise to the challenge. <laughs> It'll be very hard. <laughs> he will stand firm against Please. evil in all its forms, both sinister and veiny. <laughs> he will penetrate evil. <laughs> it was a tokusatsu Penis. too, so he had to armor up and ready for battle. Tune in next week for the thrilling climax. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be a dry <laughs> seat in the house. <laughs> Kill me. What's wrong, y'all? Where's the pond police? Oh, sorry. I guess we're dicking him over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we are being pricks. <laughs> So to step away from the puns for a little bit, what specifically have you been adding to Daikatana 2 Hitler Gets Fucked? Um, <laughs> what I've been working on a lot lately is IWAD compatibility, like the ability to just load it up with other mods and, well, other IWAD specifically. And I've been using sort of Doom as a basis, but it's also really interesting to play in Hexen. Partially because a lot of Hexen's environment revolves around exploring the environment, going around, and usually, obviously, what they intend for you is to just go back and forth, back and forth, opening up bridges, opening up doors, but when you have One a... sixteenth of the puzzle has been solved. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. When you have a jetpack and you can fly around, that makes The things... game becomes tolerable? Fuck your puzzle. <laughs> it's it's really interesting because the maps were already designed for flying to start with, with the wings of wrath that last for the entire hub. So having a jetpack at will that you can fly over gaps, you can fly up on ledges that lower later, it's really interesting and it becomes much more of a Metroidvania approach. And I really, really like that. It's definitely become a little bit more common these days to have mods with inter iwad compatibility. Like, Guncaster was built on Heretic to start with, and then Doom compatibility was kind of added as an afterthought before it became the quote-unquote main thing. But I think for the Booty Project, a full game to have iwad compatibility, that's going to really lengthen the lifespan quite a bit, because after the players are finished with the main campaign, then afterwards they can just take it through their favorite map set, and that is really fun. Hmm. Yeah, but what, what kind of dork plays the old Doom? The better question is what kind of dork still plays Hexen, other than me. I love Hexen. Yeah, shut up, dork. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Got Hexen him. lover, why am I even here? <laughs> Give me a minute. I'm gonna get a podcast that's not run by Hexen lovers. <laughs> wow, look Kids, at this. Kids, no! Wait! Don't come, don't go. Don't come. Greg's still his chair. Shut up. Oh, you don't want this fucking chair. I'm hopefully replacing it in a week or two. Sounds um, like it's gonna explode. Might it might. Somebody died that way. Now that the Hexen Hitler is gone. One eighty-eight for the puzzle has been solved. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Yo, what have you been working on recently? Uh not much. I only just Sir, started here. doing things again. Just started doing things again? Well, what have you been doing since you started? Laundry 3! Ah, uh, yes, Laundry 3. Shivers has talked with us about that before, and it was certainly interesting, the re revelations he revealed upon us. God damn it, Shivers! So, for those of us who've been uh, not exactly following everyone's projects religiously, what exactly can you tell us about Laundry? What is it? What does it entail? Well, basically, it's the sequel to... Laundry 2, which is the adventures of Rick Face Kid going around beating up creepy bastards. <laughs> and in true Shiva's glory, everything explodes and guns shoot things dead. Oh yes, that is something I have not seen often in a Doom mod, guns with the ability to shoot things dead. <laughs> Truly you guys are innovators. And know, isn't right? it like really build engine themed? Well, it has... 3D textures, that's about as far as I would take that. It's still. That's just a general vibe I've gotten off what little I've seen of it. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Because we do use Jesus, them a lot. Because, you, Jesus, you guys are keeping things close to your chest. Well, if we told everyone, then they'd see all the funny things, and then they wouldn't be funny when it came out. 
I suppose, but like, 30 seconds of fighting a monster in a room might give a good indication of the vibe. Compared to me, and I've been just been telling everyone everything about everything in regards to booty. Here's the thing, though. You also say a lot of other shit, and you like to mislead people. So it gets to the point, it's like, was he being serious that time? Or was he just fucking with us again? Keegan, please. Oh. Term? Do I really get to fuck Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, all the screenshots on the Laundry Furry page are actually fake. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though. Because Shiv is a joke like that. Well, hmm. now I'm not sure who to believe. Yeah. Is there anything more you can tell us? Well, um, after the vast gap of time in which we weren't working on it because Chivas was killed by a university or whatever, um, he played the third map and then realized, wow, this is, uh, this is bad. And so he remade the third map. <laughs> and it flows much better now. I went through it just before we started. Um, did some, added some extra actors for stuff. Detailed some things. Haven't really done much yet. But hopefully we'll get back into it full swing. Surely that can't be the only thing you can tell us. I, uh, things. Secrets. They're mine. They're my secrets! No! Go away. <laughs> oh, come now. It can't just give us a little peek, a little preview, a little snippet, a little juicy tidbit of information? Uh, no! With emphasis on juicy. I want it now. You've ruined it. <laughs> Come on, yo! Don't be such a tsundere. Uh, well, I suppose if it's juicy, mm -hmm. there is a brutal doom secret level. Oh, is this a level that you can access normally, or is it a sort of secret level that is only accessed with brutal doom? Uh, it's a. There's there's five levels and there's five secret levels, and you can just go mm. to them. They're just hard to find. The best kinds of secret levels. All right, yeah. I'm. I may have filled it with, like, imps and cacodemons that explode into Mortal Kombat 2 blood. Yes! <laughs> Complete with, like, five rib cages and six skulls? Um, no, it's mostly just blood and then just, like, generic bones. He says as he opens up Slade in a sprite sheet. <laughs> what am I, some sort of shivers? I use Mortal Kombat blood and shit for, uh, Jamoda. <laughs> you Actually... use Mortal Kombat shit for Jamoda? <laughs> hey, yo! If you want, you can use some of the blood droplets I use or I made for Jamoda because I like they actually have um angles when they fly around. I already did that. Oh well, fuck you! <laughs> you know, wow, um... yo! You didn't even mask permission. <laughs> Wait, um, you mean you used Jamoda's blood? I made, you... I made this gigantic giga hacks thing just for the motor combat, put it in, so it always looks like it's coming out the right way. And then, not even a few days afterwards, Major Cook added A-face movement direction to Zeta. So, <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> oh my god. Not that it matters, because that's, you know, new stuff, and I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Oh, come on, yo. Nope. GZ Doom is not plotting to kill you in your sleep. Sure it is. Oh, no, it isn't. It's It delegates that to McGrath and Magic Cook. Come on, yo. Nope. Embrace it. Embrace nope. it. Embrace nope. it. Nope. Hug it. Nope. Let it come into you. Embrace nope. the booty. Embrace it like you would your Toho tits. I think you broke him. Not again. Is that a bad thing? Well, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to No Man's Laundry. What have you been working on, uh, Keegan? Yeah, I've been working on lightning zappy sounds for the Thunderstinger sword attack in Jamoda. Uh, other than that, I've also been writing down ideas for a combined arms update. I would like to go back to it again and add weapon sets. Uh, multiple different weapon sets, obviously, with you know their own unique gimmicks and quirks. And also tweak some other uh, pre-existing weapons. I definitely want to go back and make a remix version of the original set and tweak the rocket launcher, swap out the particle smasher for something else, and tweak Crime. the axe a little bit to make it actually require skill. Combine arms, it certainly was a uh, interesting little weapon set, and a lot of uh, weapon sets that focus a lot on uh, gimmicks and themes and everything like that. Combine arms was just, there's a bunch of weapons. Go wild. 
And of course, you know, but I'm actually going to start making some themed weapon sets and add more gags to it and stuff. Uh, it's like I've told Shivers and you before. Um, I would like to make a medieval themed weapon set. Medieval finger quotes in the sense of you use medieval weapons, but not, not in a traditional sense. Like the <laughs> bolt action sword throwing and triple rapid dagger rifle or the bastard rifle. <laughs> it's a bolt action rifle that shoots swords. I mean, come on now. It's a gun, Frank. It's a gun that shoots swords. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> uh, a bow and arrow that has a hand grenade, like, sticky tape to the arrow. <laughs> I'm writing that one down. So you're going to uh, play as Rambo, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I also kind of want to do a, for the super shotgun replacement for the medieval weapons set, I want to make a blunderbuss that you cram a bunch of little axes into and call it either the blunder axe or the axter bus. You just shoot a bunch of little axes. Why not the blunder buster? Because you gotta have the word axe in there somewhere, in term. Same concept, but you shove like clubs in there. Call it the blunter boss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's other things that you could put into it, but that's against the warranty. You take a blunder bus and you put another blunder bus below it, and then you call it the under bus. Ah! Oh. <laughs> that's yeah, actually really uh. good. Then, of course, you know, um,. I came up with the idea, and I gave it to Pillow Blaster, though, and he made uh, he made the Grenado a reality. <laughs> I am I am so thrilled that he did that. Like, I, like I came up with the word. I'm like, wow, that's a really good idea. And I'm like, who who's enough of a fucking madman to make this happen? Oh, hey, Pillow Blaster, I got an idea for you. And then he did it. The absolute madman. I bet you anything. The original of that was actually based off something she was asked for for Laundry Three. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> Tell me, what is this grenado? Um, it's a tornado made out of grenades. Oh, see, you say Stick the word grenades. grenado, and I just keep thinking it's a mispronunciation of the Spanish grenado. No, 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 no. This is this is something way funnier. Um, it is the boom blower. And I, I figured not many people know about it in combined arms, but I also want to kind of mention it here as well. Um, I want to add a secret function for one of the weapons where you press a button, and you pull out a lighter, and you raise it up to your character's face, and you do the Barney Gumble belch, and you just shoot out a stream of fire. You know that, uh, <laughs> and you just throw dudes. Not, you know what? I'm amazed. Not many people actually know about the the secret button in Combined Arms. Hey. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I don't want to I don't want to spill the beans. Just hey. But now people know of it. Now they're going to go looking for it. Hey. That, that's good. I'm fine with that. Hey, everybody. You, you want to know don't... what the secret button is? He doesn't. Shut up. You don't even fucking... It's the zoom button. Joke's on him. I don't even use the zoom button. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? The zoom button's for dorks. I use it for Jamoda, butthole. Well, you used it. Well, actually, no, I'm going back to using zoom and reload, remember? Oh, yeah, Xandronum 3.0. Thank you, Xandronum. <laughs> <sighs> How about you, Kenzie? Let's finish this night off with you, our beloved regular guest star. Beloved? Beloved? <laughs> <laughs> No, you're okay, Kenzie. Go ahead. For now. Yeah, give it a few weeks. So, um, with the sounds in Meta Doom, I've used a lot of sounds from Doom 4 as a base, but until like this week, they've all either been pulled from D4D or Arjun, or recorded using some ridiculous recording studio set up in SnapMap using the stereo mix thing in Windows. Bloody hell. Or for some things like just turning off the music and going through the campaign and like filtering out background noise manually. That sounds horrifying. It wasn't a good process and it produced substandard results. Recently two things happened. The first thing, I figured out how to export the sounds from the game directly. They did not have file names. Fun. Second thing. Someone wrote up a script in Game Maker of all the goddamn things to actually grab the file names and file paths from an uh, XML file in the game directory and sort them all nice like. In Game Maker? Yeah, I'm not sure why he used that, but yeah, that's what they used. Huh? I can't really complain, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it's just. You, you, you'd expect that to be made in like. Java or Python. 
So now I have all the Doom Force sounds in a format I can listen to, all nicely uh, organized. And I've basically been going through that and redoing and replacing sounds as I see fit. What about uh, Bethesda? The pinball thing? Oh yeah, I went through that as well, but like I said, most of the sounds from that are from Doom 4. So I haven't really grabbed a huge amount from that. I might have to find some excuse to add pinball sounds though. <laughs> like there's a secret cheat function for the grenade launcher that I'm probably going to add sometime early next year. Explosive pinballs. Yeah, with Meta Doom, it's, it's kind of required. You have to have some kind of pinball nod. I mean, if you included the Doom Mobile Adventures, you gotta have pinball. Yeah, of course. It's just a matter of how to implement it. Isn't there a Doom board game as well? We have to conclude that. I have looked at that. <laughs> Honest to God, I analyzed that. Most of the stuff on that was either stuff that was in Doom 3, or, like, level stuff. Like, level concepts, mission ideas, and that. That'll be good if uh, Meta Doom gets its own map set. I have considered this. I've considered doing a small episode with Meta Doom in mind, and if I do that, I will pull all the ideas from uh, both versions of the board game. Because I have this gimmick, and by god, I'm going to ride it into the fucking sunset. A Meta Doom map set, that would be especially interesting if we uh, play mix and match and pick and mix with all of the uh, different possibilities. Like, say, if we were to do... Uh... E1, M1, and Doom 64 style. Yeah, just like blending together different themes and that into something vaguely approaching coherent. That's something I'm really interested in doing, but at the moment I just sort, sort of want to build the tools up. Right, right. One step at a time. Yeah, baby steps. Doom 4 level design made entirely out of Sean. <laughs> the most popular snap map on Doom 4 recreated in Doom 1 and 2. Doom 4 Tetris, in Doom. <laughs> Still, I mean, I know this is entirely hypothetical stuff, but it, it would be interesting to see some sort of meta-Doom map set nicking bits and pieces throughout the entire Doom anthology. It's something I'm down for, but I might as well wait until everyone finishes their D4D maps. <laughs> yeah. Wait for that to shake out and take all the lessons from that. Map sets for gameplay mods is already a incredible rarity as it is. I mean, the only ones I can think of are Brutal Doom and now the map sets that are popping up for D4D. And even then, most of them are just recreations of all the existing maps in Doom 4. Yeah, like, the Doom 4 maps were made for Doom 4, and trying to directly recreate them in a much more primitive engine is a folly. I'd rather take the cues from those maps and from their level designs and sort of do some... sort of go down my own path with them. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, learning from other folks. Hmm. It is... an interesting little process. Especially as we try to continue our own mapping abilities. Yeah, I need to make another map sometime soon. I'm starting to get the urge again. So do I. I really want to make a map set. Like a full map set. Guess we're gonna have to finish dump three first. <laughs> oh, that's a... That's a nice old shell nut. Alright, and with that, I think it's probably good if we uh, close things up now. We have been running for over an hour, surprisingly. Impressive. Hacks. That's a good run. Hmm. Thank you all very much for coming along. I would like to thank uh, Keegan for being a guest once again. You're welcome. Glad to be here. I would like to thank uh, Yol for coming along and offering his opinions. I would never. Don't worry, we'll let you back, in. We'll let you back out sometime. And... I think uh, it should probably be worth noting that this is actually technically the final podcast. Well, not entirely, but we are now officially on E1M8. Man, <sighs> who would have thought we'd get we'd get this far? I thought we would have dropped this after episode three. Yeah, I'm surprised. So, uh, which which two of us are the Bruiser Brothers then? Well, I mean, surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> you two are the guests that don't pop up every episode, and. <gasps> I'm sorry, Yol. You're gonna have to go down. Yo, what you are is you're the wandering lost soul that flies in, and you headbutt against someone, you're like, hey, die, and then you fly off again. <laughs> you're just like, what the fuck was that? So Keegan's just gonna have to be one bruiser then, without a brother. He's the conjoined bruiser brother. Wouldn't I be more of the long lines of like a wandering revenant? Like the ones that like get lost in the map, 
and then like as you backtrack, they sneak up and punch you in the back of the head. And you're screaming all the time? Yeah! Yeah, that explains a lot. But, yeah, we've done this for uh, eight episodes, once every two weeks, so that's about four months. Wow, we've gone a long way. <sighs> all right. After this episode, what we're probably going to do, we're probably going to do E1M9, a secret meta episode, but for this, this is the finale of the first season of Intermission. We have finished episode one. God help us all. We're going to have to pay 30 bucks for the next two episodes. <laughs> okay, so if we're the bruisers, then who's the Doom guy who dies at the end of this episode? Probably me. Well, you see, we have to think about it. So ah! Fuck! Ah!